Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, been on a Canon Films kick recently, so uh, I was going to do one more Canon review uh, for now. I promise my next few reviews will be horror-related. I just, uh, there was some Canon Films I wanted to get out of the way. Now, uh, I found this at Walmart, actually, in the dump bin, because the, they have, like, a Blu-ray bin and a $5 DVD bin, and then they also have, like, a, a bin of DVDs that are three dollars and seventy-five cents, and this was sitting in there, and uh, I just had to see Chuck Norris on the front, and the fact it was made by Shout Factory, which I thought was pretty cool. The fact that it was only three bucks and it was made by them, but um, <clears throat> this is a collection of the uh, three missing in action films on DVD. Uh, I'd only seen the first missing in action, and uh, I wanted to check them out before I pulled the trigger on possibly buying them on Blu-ray. Because I know uh, Shout Factory has... I know they have Missing in Action 1 and Missing in Action 3 on Blu-ray. I'm not sure about 2. But um, essentially, the first Missing in Action was directed by Joseph Zito. Who did uh, The Prowler and Friday the 13th Part 4. Which I didn't know till just watching this this time when I saw his name. And I thought that was really interesting that he was the director of this film. But Missing in Action 1 is actually my favorite one out of the three. But uh, it starts off with Chuck Norris. He It starts off with like a dream sequence. And it's a really badass opening dream sequence of him in war and all that. And then he wakes up and he basically has to go over and get these people that are missing in action in Vietnam. And he goes over there and he enlists the help of this old, like older guy. And I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Uh, but most notably, he was actually in Blade Runner, a really small role. He's the guy that kind of recruits uh, Decker in that. But he's like a, a skipper type guy, he's a boat, and he sails Chuck Norris over there, and Chuck Norris basically just has to go kick ass and get these people out of Vietnam. And it's a really badass movie. Uh, I think it's the best directed out of the three, uh, the most enjoyable, the most entertaining. Chuck Norris is just really badass in it. Uh, he's the, and the, the main villain is this Asian guy, I've seen him in other stuff, I don't remember his name, but... Uh, if you know in the comments below, uh, tell me what else he's been in, because I know I've seen him in stuff. I don't know if it was Happy Days or just a bunch of stuff. Um, I should have just looked it up, but it is what it is. But yeah, I definitely recommend that one, because it's just a classic Arnold, or not Arnold, uh, Chuck Norris movie. And it was actually the first movie Chuck Norris ever did for canon. And I feel like, uh, that movie encapsulates what canon was about. Now, uh... The second, it actually breezes by and was made in 84. Now, Missing in Action 2, the beginning, is actually a prequel. And I think, it, I actually know, I watched the uh, Canon Films documentary. And it was actually filmed before Missing in Action 1. But the producers and everybody thought that Missing in Action, the beginning, was poorly shot. And it was, just wasn't that good of a movie. And uh, so they actually took Missing in Action by uh, Joseph Zito and put it out beforehand to create kind of like a hype for the second one so they knew people would get the second one because the first one was so good but um it definitely is the lesser of the three uh it just it was kind of more not boring but the whole thing takes place pretty much in this camp of it, it shows what braddock went through before the whole events of the first one basically him as a prisoner of war and all that and him and his uh army mates or whatever just trying to get out of vietnam and all that and there's a lot of things that happen or whatever but overall in just general it's kind of a boring uh movie i wasn't a huge fan of it it was just kind of a chore to get through to get to the third one because i'd heard good things about the third one uh most notably from my friend uh bdg reviews i know braddock missing in action three is his favorite but um yeah it was just okay i mean it's cool to have. I mean, for three bucks for the whole thing, it was a dollar. It's definitely worth that, and it's cool to have it for the collection. But if I was to buy the Blu-rays, I would definitely buy just the first and the third one. But, uh, yeah, that's essentially what it is. Just kind of forgettable stuff. I mean, Chuck Norris, he is badass in it, but, yeah, just kind of a forgettable film. Now, uh, Braddock Missing in Action 3 is more enjoyable than the second one, but not as enjoyable to me personally as the first one. 
But basically, it the beginning opens with like a flashback of when Chuck Norris was leaving Vietnam and his wife, he sees her burnt to a crisp, or so he thinks. And basically, he it jumps like 10 or 15 years or whatever. And um, a priest goes to Chuck Norris and says, your wife is still alive and she has a 11-year-old son that's yours. And he doesn't believe it and all that. And then the CIA head operative tells him, oh, a priest came to you and told you the story, don't believe it and all that. And then Chuck Norris says, you made a big mistake because I didn't believe what he was saying until you called me in here and said that. And uh, that's where it has one of the best one-liners I've heard Chuck Norris ever say. The CIA operative says, uh, whatever you do, don't step on anybody's toes. And Chuck Norris looks at him and says, I don't step on toes, I step on necks. And then he walks out, and it just was badass. And uh, then he recruits the help of a guy to fly him over there. And uh, I also got to say the villain in this is the best villain out of the three. He's just repulsive. He... He has all these, and it also makes the stakes higher because he has like a all, like a hundred kids captive. He has all these kids uh, uh, captive from the war and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting, raising the stakes a little bit. And there's even a scene where this young girl or whatever, part of the camp, that villains just start to rape her and everything. And then Chuck Norris just busts in the door and shoots him with like this intense gun. I don't even know if it's a real gun. But it's like a rocket launcher type gun thing, and he's just blowing them away. And then there's badass chase scenes, and that's all I want to give away a part of that. But it was a highly enjoyable movie. Uh, like I said, villain was the best. Stakes were higher. It was just all around a pretty good movie. Now, these uh, if you could find this at your local Walmart, I'm sure it's still there. I mean, I just bought this, I think, like two weeks ago. Uh, it's definitely worth the $3. I would have even paid 5 for it. Uh, but if I was going to pay any more, I would have just got the individual releases because I don't like the fact that it says Chuck Norris Triple Threat and it doesn't say Missing an Action on the Spine or anything. But I do really dig that cover. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of. I've been watching a lot of canon films recently and I told myself after uh, these three I was going to get back to some horror reviews and stuff because I want this to be a primarily horror channel. But I do consider a lot of 80s grindhouse type action films and stuff like this part of that genre. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, highly enjoyable films. Just cheesy, brainless 80s action. You just turn your brain off and just popcorn type flick, you know. But uh, anyways, guys, I'll come at you again tomorrow with some horror reviews. Peace.